Welcome everyone. This is No Bullshit Gaming Podcast Two and a Half Gamers Session Number Twenty Eight. We are discussing latest industry news, having fun, but dropping knowledge. But let's not forget, this is 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. We have, oh, there you go. We have Felix Braberg in the house, Jakub Remiar, and myself, Matej Lancharic. No, nicks, no nicknames this day, uh, today. So, <laughs> how are you? How are you? Looking forward to Gamescom already? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, super excited. I mean, this is the first Gamescom now in what, two years, three years? Uh, I guess three. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. Something but, like uh, that. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was sick in the last couple of days, so I was really worried that I, I won't make it. But I will. <laughs> <laughs> Not Don't worry, you will be definitely sick afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I will be sick afterwards. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent. But uh, that's that's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. So, okay, I think it's. Uh, I think we can we can start. Yep. And let's start with a uh, with a very positive news. So I think it's uh, it's really great to see that our friends from uh, Deconstructor of Fun were inspired by our format. Uh, the latest week was a discussion about the news and the ed educational topic about uh, market research. So it's really great to see uh, these uh, these type of formats for other podcasts as well. And it's a sign that we are doing something right. Thank you very much. And this is sincere because we are all friends here. And, uh, you know, I was also invited to tweak uh, 194 where we discussed the latest Google policies. And this sparked a very discussion, a very big discussion about data, opinions, and, uh, you know, if a hyper casual is going to die in October or not, and all, all of this. So that's why we are going to present some data points uh, today from the hyper casual games. And share our opinions again, but this time, I mean, not this time, but it's it's backed, backed by the by data. And everything what we say here or I say everywhere else is actually backed by uh, by data. So I'm not pulling it out of my ass. <laughs> well, sometimes. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> yeah, today news uh, one uh, about Embracer Group. Uh, then we're going to talk about very briefly update from my side about Google. Uh, iOS and retargeting campaigns. Uh, Felix has a very big update about uh, Admon, uh, Admob Bidder. And then the, the hyper casual games, data points, and comments. So, Jakub, what's, what's going on with the Embracer? Yeah, so everyone's favorite uh, <laughs> constellation of companies that are getting bigger <laughs> and bigger. <laughs> Uh, Embracer reported its financials uh, for first quarter of 2022, not second quarter, uh, as usual companies do in these days. So keep that in mind. Uh, that was a 107% increase in net sales, which the company uh, reported 682 million, which is more than 291, well, 98 million it earned with the same period last year. Uh, the interesting part is that the biggest growth, uh, if I get it right, is in mobile segment of Embracer. Ooh. And the PC segment, even though it makes more, like uh, 134 million compared to 208 million, had reported only a 2% increase from year over year, which is kind of positive signal where everybody was saying that Embracer can, can pull up this organic growth together. So I guess What the fuck good. is organic growth? You know, everybody tells about like Embracer, like we'll synchronize everything and you like pull a okay. bunch of companies together and everything will grow. I don't even yeah, think okay. they synchronize payroll, like it's all separate, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> some of the companies aren't even gaming companies, like mobile gaming companies, you know, not even gaming companies. Like, yeah, as, as, as seen here, like they acquired the Asmodee Digital, which yeah. is, if I get it right, the biggest like board game company. So, <laughs> a board games. Isn't yeah, that board, a game? Physical board game. Sure, but physical it's, product. Okay, but nobody say like a gaming company needs to be mobile gaming company. Come on, man. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, the other interesting news is that they announced that they acquired IP rights to the Lord of the Rings. Ooh. So, why so. is it why is it so imp important? <laughs> I guess those were pretty pricey. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing. Sure. But no, but, no, but think about it. Like Lord of the Rings, they're having a TV show coming out on Amazon. 
And yeah. if you do that, that's going to generate a lot of buzz. People might be upset, but you know, there's going to get a lot of viewers. And if you come out with a mobile game roughly around the same time, oof, yeah, that's going to get a lot of downloads. And who is going to produce the mobile game mm. for them? That's, that's the that's the question. So they're well, they're buying. Question like, is if, if it's even a mobile game. Keep in yeah, mind that they have yeah. like half of their studio. Maybe it's a, a board PC game. Console. Yeah, <laughs> board game. <laughs> Maybe yeah. It's a board game. <laughs> Man, uh, like as a Swede, I'm just proud that, you know, everything will eventually just belong oh, yeah. to Embracer and be Swedish. So, you know, well done. <laughs> yeah. So if anybody from Embracer is, uh, is uh, listening to this, you can acquire my company as well. And there you go. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I can't do UA on board games though. So I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's not do that. Anyway, it will be interesting because there, I think there's the... What's there? There's Forex World of the Rings game from China, if I get that right. Then there's like some other games, but not that kind of a big, super prominent Lord of the Rings game currently on the mobile market, if I get that right. Well, there was... Like, there's uh, a lot of PC games coming in. Like, I know, like, there's that Golem game, wait a second, which is like wait a second. single Warner Bros. adventure. Warner Bros. Didn't have, is that like the Forex game you're talking about? It's not from China. Ah, is it from Warner Bros.? Okay. I think so, I think so. I, well, yeah, let's okay. just... You can you, you can continue talking while while I uh, try to find. So, it. do we have any like if they actually are making a mobile game? Do we care to speculate which one of their studios they would like put that heavy weight on their shoulders, or do you think they're multiple? Just, yeah, multiple. multiple, multiple. Yeah. <laughs> of course, multiple. If you buy the rights, why not do multiple? Like especially if this new series from Amazon, which is the biggest budget of any series, will took off, there will be a lot of buzz around it. So. I guess it's it's a interesting move, but yeah, yeah sorry, let's see it wasn't if the, it will pay off. It was Game of Thrones, sorry. So Game of Thrones, the yeah. the Warner Bros. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Fingers so, crossed. Ho- yeah. Hope this Lord of the Rings things will work out at least. That that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> well, uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. So. Um, from my side, I mentioned there are some like Google interesting beta programs that are coming uh, live or, well, uh, not live yet, but they are expanding to, to different um, developers because there was the Tiroas campaign type in the beta for very few developers. Now I'm getting whitelisted for uh, for some of my uh, my studios that I manage. And it's, uh, it's still a bit too early to say. Uh, it's not too stable but on some accounts it shows very good potential and uh, just to be completely honest the ios campaigns tiroas campaigns before the att happened those were the the campaigns you you should have in your uh, in your campaign mix that was like the best performing campaign type on google for ios and even outperforming uh, outperforming facebook now it's the you know it's different times uh, let's see if uh, if the tiroas on ios can catch up with other uh, other channels on the on the iOS. Then uh, there is uh, like an interesting um, retargeting campaign, and uh, I'm going to start running some retargeting campaigns on Google, optimized for revenue, because uh, that's something uh, really interesting. Which is uh, the Tiro as I mentioned for iOS. This is for value; it's UA only. But this is also possible on Google and uh, retargeting side. And Google is one of the best performing channels at the moment that I see. And I, I want to explore all the options that are available. And uh, my very good friends from Google are super nice to me with all their help. So uh, why not to try everything that uh, that's available? So I will keep you posted, guys. So just a quick question before I yeah. kind of jump into my AdMob uh, bitter update. What's your favorite Google product then? Ooh, well, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> right. Google search. <laughs> Google search, yeah, well, of course. All right. Well, probably uh, Google search, yeah. Well, the or reason Google, I'm asking... Google Maps is also pretty handy. Yeah, the, the reason I'm asking no, is... Uh, I, so I, uh, I promised that. to share some data on the closed beta on AdMob bidding. And dare I say, I'm actually starting to question myself which one of my... like Which one of the Google par- products is actually my favorite? Uh, usually, I'd say search or Gmail, but dare I say now, AdMob Bitter is creeping ah. up the top list of my favorite Google products, <laughs> and the results look <laughs> quite interesting indeed. So, uh, first things first, uh, the AdMob Bitter is currently being tested as a closed beta on Max. I think there's maybe 10 to 15 publishers worldwide that are testing it currently, but they have announced they're going to be expanding the beta soon. 
So if you are an admon manager and a nerd like me listening to this, this is your calling to basically start being annoying and pushy with your admob AM because they are the ones who decide or can push to the influencer who decides who get to be in who gets to be in the next extension. So how are you supposed to run the AdMob bidder test? Well, first things first, you need an AdMob SDK of at least 20.4 or over on Android or 8.7 or over on iOS. And here comes the interesting thing. While you're running this test, you're allowed to run a hybrid setup where you're keeping your three AdMob calls and you're testing your Google bidding meaning that not only are you getting bidding inventory across your whole waterfall, but you're also allowed to keep your three traditional ad mob placements. Yum, yum. So is this the like meta build for now? Like this is the cookie cutter setup? So basically, this, basically they sent me this three page, like how to do the A-B tests. It takes, uh, I'll get into that, but this is, yeah. It's very generous of Google, who traditionally in the admon space has been known not to be very generous unless you're on the admon platform. Mm -hmm. So uh, currently uh, the supported formats is banners, interstitials, and rewarded. Also native is available for early access, and you're also able to test on all geos, so not just on America. Uh, so you're given quite strict rules of how you're supposed to run the test. You're supposed to run the test using the max AB testing tool now, and the test is supposed to last for 15 days, which means that for the titles you're testing, you're unable to run any other AB test for two weeks. So what are you supposed to do? Phase one, day one, you're supposed to set up an AB test of between 5 to 25 percent of your user base so if you have a big app you're supposed to go on the lower end here and if you have a uh, smaller app you're supposed to go on the higher end here then you're supposed to leave that for about three days do a quick sanity check to make sure that yeah the numbers are matching up in your ad mob dashboard and kind of if you're seeing that matching up with your mediation dashboard yeah and you're not making the mistake as you described on in the last session yeah like guys your mistakes last time i feel like i feel like there's more mistakes there like yeah, <laughs> yeah no. i'm not i'm not happy with your guys's mistakes <laughs> like come on <laughs> if you're not losing someone 20k that's not a mistake <laughs> The problem with let's say ex at least game game design mistakes that you see their impact after like half a year, yeah, which so. then are kind of hard to attribute than who did actually did the mistake. Good, <laughs> diffuse responsibility. Then there's no <laughs> pointing fingers. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let me go back to this. So after three days, you're supposed to ramp it up to at least twenty five or fifty percent if everything looks good. Then you're supposed to leave it at this level for. Uh, up to 15 days when you're kind of evaluating the performance. So now to the most interesting part, what results am I seeing so far? So I am now nine days into this 15 day test on quite a lot of titles and it's looking quite interesting indeed. Uh, so certainly enough for me to say that the AdMob Bidder is probably my third favorite Google product at the moment. So yeah. <laughs> so keep in mind when I'm talking through these results here, like it's only for rewarded that I'm testing and the geo mix that I'm testing is 80% America. So Android. So after a 5% rollout, I'm seeing an average here of ad ARP die increases of between four and a half to 6%. When I scale this up, this goes down a little bit to 4.5% on average. But then something magical just happens when you scale these up to 50% A-B test. And it just shoots through the goddamn moon. And basically when you scale up to 50%, <laughs> it's between 14 to 18% uplift in Adarm, uh, AdArpDAO. Or in other words, as you like to say in <laughs> Admon, a slam dunk motherfucking home run. <laughs> <laughs> so, how is Android this even looks, possible? How is this even possible? Well, well, we'll get into that with kind of the concerns okay. that I'm seeing after I'll yeah, voice some of that as well. So, okay. iOS. So, I was told to split out since I have waterfall set up both for IDFA and LAT users. So, 
Here's where it's starting to look a bit more grim, but that kind of just reflects the industry as a whole after our good friends at Apple decided to, yeah, tear it all up. <laughs> so IDFA only. Uh, so basically on like the early tests here, the 5 to 25%, I'm seeing small uplifts of anywhere between 4 to 6%. LAT only, I'm seeing down lifts of between 4 and 5%. But there's one title here that's an outlier that's down 13% when I switch on this bidder. Uh, so a blend, for some reason, you're seeing a really big uplift of 13.6% on a 50% A-B test. So in short, it looks like LAT traffic is a real struggle still for the AdMob bidder. But overall, it's looking like a very, very good start. A couple of points of concerns, though. Um, so the average CPM for the bidder is still roughly half of that of ad mob placements. So let's say, yeah, let's say hypothetically, if I'm having a $20 average eCPM on ad mob placements, bidder's coming in around 10. Uh, so what does that actually mean? So if I were to remove this hybrid setup and only use the bidder, I'd be losing considerable amount of money. Uh, so uh, compared to, like, it's very, like, worth saying here that like the other like bidders I started testing when it was an early enclosed beta, like they weren't this good this early because it's very hard to build a bidder. You need to do a lot of optimization. So the other bidders I was testing, it took way longer to get anywhere close to even half of these results. So I'm quite optimistic, but essentially back to your question, Monty, like how this is possible. Yeah. So you're keeping your ad mob placements. They're losing a bit in performance, but AdMob, you're only allowed to have three placements, so you have exposure in three price points in your waterfall. And the bidder then comes and just does the whole waterfall and just mm -hmm. buys whatever it likes. So probably, like, usually you have AdMob at quite high placements, so the bidder is getting more exposure to kind of, yeah, lower quality, yeah, impressions, and that's where it's coming in bidding. Did have one, at, like, error happen. Uh, so one of the games I set up, uh, basically... Ad performance dropped to near zero and when I set up the bidding in the hybrid. And apparently that's quite normal and yeah, can happen. And it took about a week after that. And then it was just recovered to normal levels. So overall, I'll be done with the test like mid next week at Gamescom. It's looking quite promising. Well done, Google. Let's see if yeah. this becomes my favorite Google product next week. <laughs> and then then uh, after you, your test is done, so what then? You're going to implement it into your like business as usual waterfall or how does that going to work? So right now, I'd still be allowed to keep the... Actually, let me double check that. Uh, Ooh. Will they kick out their fixed placements if this works? No, so right now, like even if uh, like after this test... Uh, if the performance is acceptable, you're able to start another. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you're able to keep the hybrid setup. So mm. usually what happens then is, uh, Max at some point will decide that, yeah, this is looking good or bad. And then they basically take out the hybrid setup solution. They did that on, I think it was Vungle a couple of months ago where they just suddenly said like, yeah, that's not allowed to use both anymore. Okay. So then you will go with bidders only or what's yeah, going to look man, like, like this is the future like whenever you come bidding i'll never have to make a mistake with a placement thing again Ooh. so that's great yeah okay so future is less felix altogether oh yeah definitely <laughs> less <laughs> of me who doesn't want that yeah of course yeah, yeah of course but is it uh, is it good across the old titles or is it just like uh, very good on some and then is it based on genre or is it just like... So I'm only good? whitelisted on one account that's primarily okay. idle genre. So I can okay. only speak for that, right? But like, okay. man, it's looking quite good, man. Like, but <laughs> LAT is still an issue. But yeah. like anything in Admon, when you're able to get gains of between 10 to 20%, that's like really good just for mediation. Like if you want to get bigger gains, you usually have to put new ad placements or change it up like that. But yeah, quite impressed. But LAT does look like a concern. Okay, what can be done uh, on the LAT side to to make it work a little bit better? And no less like no the holy grail question. Like if I okay. knew that, yeah, probably okay. making a company <laughs> doing it instead. Um, okay then. Well, in that case, you just need to have very high opt-in rates. So you have uh, the IDFA, a lot of IDFA traffic. Oh, are you trying to slide in the next topic there? Yeah, oh, maybe, maybe. Totally done, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very sneaky. 
because we are going to discuss like how do hyper casual like uh, games actually make money because there are some discussions about uh, what what we said and not only we said but a lot of uh, other guys from the industry like uh, defending the hyper casuals and uh, what why we think uh, they're not going to be dead and I think uh, we don't need to explain the the policies all over again, but there was very there is like very big um, question mark on on the unexpected interstitials, and unexpected could mean basically anything that is like intrusive in, in uh, intrusive placement, and it's like really if you are playing the game, then it can just show into your face out of nowhere, which is fine. That's like one, but it is it. Uh, like in the middle of the gameplay or I was playing now one game from Say Games which is called the Auto Master Build the Empire and I was I just finished the task and then bam interstitial just popped into my face is this unexpected or is it like a, a normal placement so I guess nobody knows that was like that was my my biggest point because uh, I was talking to some of the Google reps and even they can't explain so is it only mid gameplay, or is this like after finishing a task also unexpected? So no one knows. Uh, and I think bigger publishers like uh, Rolic or Voodoo or Lion Studios, and even now Say Games, well maybe Say Games uh, do this type of uh, uh, intrusive uh, placement. But these bigger companies, I mean, they can't afford to show uh, ads like this. Because, uh, well, they're super big and this is just like very short term strategy how to earn a lot of money. So I think it's a, it's a play for smaller publishers how to, how to catch up with these big guys. And, uh, and I think what was now in the top charts, which was the, the Snow Race game, that was published by some very weird Chinese publisher I've never heard about. So, I mean, yes, I guess uh, there are still companies that are trying to sneak in a lot of different uh, gray zone or gray area placements just to make a lot of money in a very short period of time. But it's something that's going to happen always. And there are going to be exceptions and outliers. So so what do you guys think about uh, about this? So, like, the part about catching up, like, I don't get it at all. Like who's gonna catch up to what? Like whoever are the big um, hyper casual companies, they just you know they have their grinders. Everybody's yeah. sending prototypes to them. They're testing it. They pick one out of hundred per month and scale it up. I don't see any catching up at all. Okay, uh, but you you have these like weird uh, small publishers coming out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah like and of in, course, but directly but you don't to see the, the top other tracks. thousand prototypes that went into the trash. <laughs> sure, guys, you know. Well, like, no, this is all about retention, right? So the good A-list, like hyper-casual studios, they pretty much have better retention than the other hyper-casual studios that are a lot smaller. So this all comes down to profit margin. Like the smaller studios who haven't yet made it, they live and die by the margins. The bigger hyper-casuals have thicker margins so they can afford to be less intrusive. Like the small gaming publishers, yeah, they, they tend to be more annoying deals, placements. And yeah, these are the ones that's going to get punished. Yeah, but, but keep in mind again that hyper casual is about frequency of launches. And some of these studios, they have like a chain gun and you have like a small revolver. And that's that's the exact comparison. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. Fair enough. <clears throat> but then, uh, then there was a, a big discussion about the interstitials that are closable actually after five seconds. So most of these interstitials are actually closable after five seconds because that is the sweet spot where you generate the most money and not losing on the retention side. Because yes, you could get uh, you could set it up for ten seconds, fifteen seconds, thirty seconds, whatever uh, you want. But then when you look, when you are looking at your data, uh, anything that is above five seconds really influences your retention and. Uh, that's why you go back and see like what kind of uh, seconds actually make sense. So everything um, below 15, which is not policed by Google and it's closable, it's going to be fine. So you look at your data and then choose whatever works. And usually five seconds works because then everything else between five seconds and 15 seconds like really influences the user experience. 
and that again comes down to, to the retention that uh, that you mentioned, Felix. But to sum it all up, I think uh, this is only Android, and then there is a whole iOS platform which remains untouched with these Google policies, obviously. But I know ATT, blah blah blah, all these uh, things that happened. Hyper casuals are going to die because ATT happened. But again, they are here. Everybody's here, even on the iOS side, running pretty profitable campaigns. Yes, bigger companies have problems, but you know who who doesn't have problems? But then I remember there there we'll was all die one day. Yeah, of course. <laughs> there you the, go. The idea. Keep in mind that the idea of hyper casuals dying is very tempting for everyone else that is not making hyper casuals. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the whole point of this. I said those games are kind of fun. I mean, yes, they're like full of uh, ads, but as I said, like you just turn off the internet and play. Nobody cares. <laughs> don't don't share that. Ah. What are you trying to do to my industry here? <laughs> Shush. Shush. <laughs> Stop. So I'm sorry, Felix. No, no, no. Just you know, play. Uh, just <laughs> leave watch the, internet. the ads. Yeah, watch a lot of ads. But you are not you are not um, running any hyper casual games anyway, right? No. no. There you go. But back to the iOS and ATT. So I, I know uh, Jakub was wasn't you on the on, on that presentation with Christian uh, uh, by Game Camp or Google, where he talked about um, how he could um, get like eighty percent of opt-in rates on the ATT prompts and pre-prompts windows for for all of their um, games uh, in their portfolio. So I mean, it's definitely possible. So even with ATT. If you can work on different uh, different fronts, you can get uh, a lot of uh, IDFA. So, anything you can add, Felix? Eighty percent sounds really high. Do you know if that was on hyper casual? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. That was uh, Chris Calderon. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We have, we have those slides. We have yeah, those me personally, slides like I've never seen higher than fifty six percent opt in rate. But you know, fifty six percent is you know a hell of a lot higher than what people spawned or like yeah prophesized where it would be around fifteen percent. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, 80%. That's like, I wish I can do that. Yeah, maybe I need to speak to Chris again. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. he shared a lot of slides, like how they actually ended up on the 80%, what kind of tests they did, and uh, how those tests look like. I think uh, it's 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 online on YouTube on the Game Camp um, channel, actually. So guys, if you want, uh, I can put uh, the link into the show notes. And, uh, and yeah, so... After talking to, to some of the, the guys from the hyper-casual space, uh, what we found out. So you have uh, 50% ad revenue coming from rewarded videos and then 50% coming from interstitials. But well, that's what they claim. So where, where's the, like, the, like the banners? I still feel... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Who said yeah, that? Yeah. that? What? No. No, no. Well, I no, had man. I had some discussions with uh, on my own as well. Yeah, me too. Okay. Hearing different things. Let's compare right. notes. Yeah, of course, of course. This is yeah, you know, this is what I found out. But I still, uh, still, then after some, uh, after some discussions, we came down to the fact that like ten percent is actually like banners, then fifty percent is interstitials, and forty percent is, is uh, rewarded videos. Whatever. But still, then we found out that these these play this one placement, which is intrusive could generate any, anywhere from like 5 to 10% from the overall Android mix. So how the fuck is this going to destroy the whole genre? But so. this is assuming that all your other placements are okay and you are not squeezing just this one. Yeah, of course, because it's still like a, a part of the whole Atmos strategy. It's not like the main pillar anyway. Yeah, but just saying that some hyper-casual games just slap the interstitials all over them. And that's that's the whole thing. So those ones will get probably kicked off. Yeah, like, of course. I mean, like that's hundred percent. I see how this like doomsday prophecy came to be because it's very easily done, right? So I spoke to a friend of mine uh, who gave me some data. So he has to be anonymous. So take what you will from that. But he has great knowledge of the hyper casual space. So yeah, I can see like where the kernel of truth that sent you down like this like dark road. How hyper casual is going to die? Like is actually yeah. how it can actually start. So. He said that majority of hyper casual revenue actually now comes from Android, and that's actually mm -hmm. sixty or seventy percent. Okay. That's now the new norm, which is quite high, right? Mm -hmm. And exactly like you said, fifty percent of this revenue on Android does come from interstitials. So 
if you take this at face value, like the situation, it looks very dire. Um, but what they're not yeah. taking into account is like the like the amount of gaming or the amount of hyper casual companies that are actually utilizing these placements that are actually going to be out like outlawed by Google when this comes to effect in on the 30th of September. So I spoke to Vincent Ferrier, uh, of he's a VP of monetization at Tap Nation, not an insignificant hyper casual studio by any means, like fairly large. And yeah, they're probably only behind maybe some Turkish studio, triple dot voodoo. Yeah. He's not worried at all. He pretty much reinforced what you said earlier, uh, that like hyper casual studios with the bad retention uh, that force use intrusive interstitial placements, like these are the ones that are going to be in trouble and they'll be in trouble because they have no other choice because otherwise they wouldn't like break even. He said like Tap Nation, like their interplacements, like it's always at end of levels and they don't even have the splash screen full interstitial yeah. apps, uh, ads at app open. And like even Google reps are telling them that their placements are fine. So he estimates that they'll lose 0% of ad revenue come when they're actually going to start like, yeah, policing or policing the, the change on the 30th. Hmm. Do we think that after this change, maybe there will be another change to tighten the hyper casual even more? That's a good if question. The, if the stores, you know, like if, if your main premise is that we want to get this thing out of the store. So let's kind of, try to boil the frog a little bit here's, and then a little bit more. Here's the funny thing. So when I spoke to Vincent, like Google's also doing this at a weird time, like typical big company corporate like shenanigans. So at the same time, they have a closed beta of a Google, uh, what did they call it? Um, no no that as well i didn't know about this one even so basically (laughs) they're beta testing their own like their own app open ad format that only takes up 70 percent of the screen instead of 100 percent of the screen so it's Mm. still an app open ad but it takes up less percent so it's like is that going to be outlawed and why is that okay because it only takes up 30 percent less of the screen so it's just like is that what Google's trying to do? Just push them to their own new ad format? Is that what this is all about? Like, it's just, everything just seems off. Like, there's no, yeah, substance. It's just, what? There's so many different, yeah, so many yeah, different if, data points are just proving different things. And just dumb question. If you if you have an interstitial in the game and you don't don't put it on full screen, is it going to be a problem? Or is it, it needs to be a, it needs it to, needs be to be full screen. screen? It needs to be full yeah. screen. Oh, okay, then. Then that's uh, that's solved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I still think uh, this is not uh, not going to be uh, such a big problem. But again, uh, I, it's not that I just pulled this out of my ass. It's just uh, we are looking at the, the data from the, the hyper casual games. I'm going to compare some of the hyper casual game launches before the ATT and after the ATT and how how it actually. Uh, changed and uh, because I still see a lot of uh, hyper casual games in the top charts uh, even uh, even these days. So I guess uh, if uh, if the game genre is dead, I don't think like the the gaming companies would put a lot of uh, money behind those launches. But yeah, let's let's definitely put all of these points into an article and then have a discussion at the end of the year, like uh, and to see like what exactly happened. Then I think there is a there is one one other point which is the the arbitrage and uh, on the UA side, uh, which uh, apparently makes uh, hyper casual going to die. So <laughs> let's uh, let's let's take a look at like how the ad network structure actually looks like on the on the UA side and the UA side. And which again I think uh, not that which again this isn't the, uh, like a main pillar for the UA. The, the whole ad network part. It's just a lot of other um, UA channels. Uh, but yeah, different publishers, different UA mix. So we can we can take a look at like two two structures for the for the any ad network like Unity, Irons or whatever upline. So at, at least from my side, what I used used to do. So I have the, this like exploration campaign, which is running on all all network. Uh, which is having, which has a small budget, so you know I don't spend a lot of money on bullshit uh, publishers that don't don't bring any any revenue back. And then I have allow list a campaign with top publishers with high budgets on different geos that actually produce the results and uh, are aiming for the ROAS and LTV. So I exclude low performing publishers right away. 
but you could put it in the low tier campaign with low bid, see how they perform. Depends on what, what are the low performing publishers? Is like there one genre that usually performs worse? No, it's just, uh, it's not only one genre. It's, uh, it's usually a group of different, uh, different genres. Depends on what kind of game you are trying to advertise. It's usually different in, in a different games. So for example, for midcore game, Sometimes idol works well, uh, sometimes it doesn't, depends on the, the audience of that, that specific game. So I've seen one game works really well uh, in one mid-core and it doesn't in the other one. So there you go. Depends on the LTV, actually. But yeah, then, you know, if you are excluding this and you do it manually, it's fine. But bigger companies have automation for this, so it's, it's, it's done based on some requirements uh, that you can just set up or just a set of rules that is actually excluding those um, low performing publishers. So as soon as there is a new publisher in the network, aka it can be new hyper casual game, which is uh, taking all the traffic suddenly from your exploration campaign. Uh, you can block list exclude it after a few hundred of installs by automation or you can do it manually. And uh, I usually do this like types of uh, optimization on a weekly basis. So I have low budgets on this exploration campaign, so I don't spend a lot of money on the new new hyper casual game or not, it, it can it can be any other genre or any other game. Just now in this uh, context, it can be just a hyper casual game. So it's actually very rare to see a new hyper casual game in the network that gets too many installs until it's excluded, at least from, from my, my UA uh, process. But this is more of a problem of UA teams and their optimization processes rather than just the whole genre. So it's uh, it's not that easy to say that it's going to be like uh, dead because this placement suddenly gets killed and then uh, we don't have any any other new games out out there anymore. But then like this is very this was very simplified structure from the from the UA point of view. Then we have actually advanced structure where we have exploration campaign, we have testing publisher campaign, we have push campaign with the different CPI bits. We have another push campaign where we can just get more information from the, the exploration campaign and just move these publishers here and there. Then we could get like campaign where we have CPI based on ad rank, so where uh, our camp where our videos are actually me, ranked. Me, 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 me. Shit. I can't even spell that. Can you explain some of that? Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to what do you want to know? Just it's I mean it's it can be super, campaign, what? Like Yeah, it can be on, actually man. pretty advanced. So you you know, you have auction, so you have let's say first 10 10 placements or 10 ad ranks. So if you are if you have uh, if you're bidding $10 let's say in the US, you can be on the second position. And then if you bid 15, you can be on the first uh, first position, but the the CPI on the first position could be just like eleven. So you are you know you are not not bidding efficiently. So you know you can like you have these like discussions with the uh, with your uh, monetization at uh, representatives. You can have the same discussion on the UA side and see like hey guys, so you know what's my ad rank where 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 my um, campaign is or or video is actually shown on which uh, which rank and then i want to just move one rank above but i don't want to pay like 10 times 10 times more so that's you know that's uh, that's one type of the 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 campaigns you can run then the the allow list which is more like a white list campaign with like a top tier can, um, publishers you can bid a lot higher than on the exploration campaign and then you can have a middle uh, middle layer where you just bid, let's say, fifty percent more than the exploration campaign, and then just get another type of uh, type of audience. So it's like there's a huge advanced uh, structure you can run on the ad network. So it's not like yeah, well, I just exclude this and here and there, and then that's it. Hyper casuals guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for the explanation. <laughs> Yeah, hyper casuals uh, died like twenty times on the podcast, oh, yeah, but well, never actually will. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting uh, interesting topic to to always discuss. But UA was dead already five times. Here you are, and here I, we I, are I, as well. I would so. took, an, took another angle here, like why hyper casual even exists 
like because of the increased eCPMs. That's the main point why these games paid off because the business model wasn't reliable before. So until this thing kind of goes in, then I don't think so. It will die. Yeah, well, I don't think like anyone relied on the ads that much. Now, you know, apparently it's it's a very much a very good business model. You can yep. earn a lot of money on top. Beautiful but, business model, am I might yeah. even <laughs> Yeah, I would say it will work until we figure out something better than ads. Like, I don't know, you know, VR. Ah, come on, no. I'm going to no. buy a VR headset and stab you to death with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw some articles about the VR um, headset being very close to the size of the glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Uh, so, just uh, before we wrap up, I actually just wanted yeah. to like ask, Marcia, like, what would you expect to happen on Android? Let's say we have a red October. So let's yeah. say Google actually does end up banning like nine, twenty-five no, percent of interstitial inventory and hyper casual. Like, how big of a portion is that of overall impressions? Would you estimate? In uh, in in my UA world, yeah, in the UA world, because that that's what matters at the end, right? Yeah, well, it could be a very hard, a very big hit for the ad um, ad networks. Even on the on the Facebook audience side, for TikTok, Pangle is not live in US still, right? So it doesn't matter that much. Google could be a problem a little bit. But there's still like a lot of other placements. So even if it's like 25 percent of the of the interstitials, it's not going to be twenty five percent of the whole inventory. So, yeah, I, again, I don't see this as, as a big problem. But I'm always optimistic. I'm always optimistic. Maybe it's sometimes too optimistic. Well, we'll see in a couple of months. All hmm. right. So, yeah. anything and anyone else wants to add? Yeah, I think that's it. I think yeah. that's it for today. See you. We at will be Gamescom. at the Marriott Bar Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening. If you guys want to meet up in person, yeah, yeah high five us. We'll also be at the Deconstructor of Fun event together. We're looking forward to seeing you guys. And good, yeah. good session. This is actually a yeah. good one. Yeah. All right. No mistakes have to be made. made. Yeah. Bring your VR hat. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye.